Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name's Justin. So here's a question for you. Are electronic drums still getting better? I mean, if you take away the marketing fluff and the gimmicks that companies will sprinkle in just so it on paper is different than the previous one, are electronic drums still making legitimate progress from year to year like they have in years past? Now, on the one hand, it's really easy to see progress when you're going from something like 1986 Yamaha to 2021 Yamaha. Obviously, there's going to be a massive jump in performance, uh, the feel of the pads, and also just the way the modules sound. But the line gets a lot more fuzzy when you go to like, I don't know, 2011. Those pads actually had two rim zones and a tuning dial. So the new pads actually have lost functionality over something that they released a decade ago. Now, obviously, there were reasons for the switch, and the new generation on the whole is better. But it's an example of the line between old drums and new drums being less obvious than it used to be. Also, there's a bunch of electronic drum companies that are just famous at this point for recycling the exact same components and modules over and over again under different names to sort of give the illusion that they're coming out with new stuff when they're really not. So what's the purpose of me bringing all this up? I'm not here just trying to say that electronic drums aren't making progress. In fact, in this video, I'm going to take more of a hopeful approach and explain why electronic drums are getting better, but it doesn't feel like it. Like we are actually seeing legitimate progress. I play all the brand new stuff. Cool stuff is happening. But I also do want to give a little bit of a devil's advocate as to why people don't feel the upgrades that are happening and why it doesn't feel like we're getting the kinds of advancements that we used to get in the past. So in this video, we're going to explain why that's happening. But first, today's video is brought to you by eDrumCenter.com. If you're in the market for a brand new electronic drum set, or even if you just want to upgrade your current kit with a new symbol or a new module, go check out the discount code to eDrumCenter.com in the description below. It's more of like a discount link, not a discount code. Anyway, back to the video. Okay, so the first reason why I believe electronic drums are getting better, but it doesn't always feel like it, is that electronic drum flagships are the ones getting all the cool, new, interesting features. A really easy to reach for example right now is probably the DWE. This is the most exciting drum set currently in development. I hope it ends up being good. It's going to be the first ever wireless electronic drum set with acoustic shell sizes using pitch bending drums. And also it doesn't even have a module. It has a trigger interface using your laptop. And then it has DW samples as you play the DW drums. Really cool combination. Not all ideas and concepts are first tried out on flagships. Sometimes cheaper electronic drums will try something new as well. But the expensive electronic drums are usually the kits that get it done right first. For example, the Pearl Fightman had two-piece electronic hi-hats, possibly before anybody else. But the general consensus is that the Roland TD20 line is the company that first got it done right. DW isn't the first company to do wireless. First, a trigger tried that out first. But word on the street is that DW hired the guy behind that company. So now with a big company backing developments and putting it into a polished final product, you can probably guess that the new and improved version will be a lot closer to perfection than when it was like one guy and one company making it for a more affordable price. I hate that that's the case, but that's the way it is. Electronic flagships have a tendency to get a feature that is new, but in a state worth buying. The company will trim it down, cut costs, and then bring those features into the mid and entry level prices. So as companies churn through generation after generation, today's mid-level kit will be better than an older flagship from the same company. The problem is this process takes a very long time. It eventually leads to results like we finally, finally have mid-range electronic drum sets that are actually good. F-Note, Roland, Alesis, Yamaha, ATV, they all have fantastic mid-range electronic drum sets that make it so you don't really need to buy a flagship anymore unless you feel like it. And there is hope for cheaper electronic drums. I have seen the $300 and $500 electronic drums progressively get better and better and better as I've run this channel. They just have. But it happens a little bit slower sometimes than the flagship stuff. The electronic drum industry runs on four to six year cycles. I talked to Roland about this once and they told me they don't actually run on official number of years. Like every four years, the brand new flagship has to hit or every six years, it's when the product is ready. But coincidentally, the new product always seems to be ready in four to six years. Okay, so the third reason why electronic drums are getting better, but it doesn't always feel like it, is that truly groundbreaking, cool ideas that everybody needs to copy, those truly groundbreaking ideas are few and far between. We get like maybe a couple of them every decade. In between, we have tons of gimmicks, you know, features nobody asked for or features that maybe seemed cool on paper, but in real life, turns out the general public did not care and the product eventually crashes and burns because no one's buying it. I love covering the kinds of ideas that are wacky and weird and nobody asked for because they always make for a fun video, like the Roland RT Mic S. It's a drum mic that is also a drum trigger that is also a drum module. Those kinds of products are always fun to talk about. 
And remember that Chinese company HXM when they put drum amps in all their kick drums? It was a really fun concept and it made the drum set feel alive because the kick drum literally vibrated when you hit it. You could actually feel it through the kick drum pedal on your foot. Made for a fun video, but nobody actually cared. And the company dropped this, uh, you know, putting a drum amp inside of the kick drum from their next flagship that came out after the one that I played. And then you have like the classic examples, like the Zildjian Gen 16s. Remember those? I think Zildjian just like invented low volume cymbals overnight. And then they tried to one-up themselves by running a pickup system under the bell over to a cymbal module that then let you change the overall tonal character of the cymbal sound, like making it darker or brighter or whatever. So really cool idea. On paper, it seemed like it could have changed everything about electronic drums. They were even bundling it with the DTX 500 series, if I remember correctly. But in reality, not enough people bought them. It confused too many people and it ended up costing way too much. So basically new ideas or at the very least updated twists on old concepts, this new stuff is always being tried out. The problem is most ideas end up being gimmicks or the general public doesn't really care about it even if it is a good idea to some. New ideas that are so good everybody has to go out and copy it, those kinds of ideas are very rare. Okay, so now let's move ahead to number four. If you think that electronic drums aren't making very much progress, Part of the reason for this could be that maybe you're not using drum software. If you want to talk about the really crazy stuff you can do, go check out the book, The Art of E-Drumming, or check out the YouTube channel, uh, The Ableton Drummer. Both of these resources are great for learning how to use Ableton with electronic drums. The power of combining Ableton with other programs together for live use is incredible. There's this great video of Adam Marcello being interviewed by Sound Attack. This is when he was on tour for Katy Perry. He explained how he used Ableton Live, Main Stage, and AP Trigger to change the sound of the drum pads by themselves just depending on where they were in the song. That way he could go from having 30 pads to just having like four. Software like this also lets you do things like automate or trigger light shows depending on where you are in the song, or even trigger video wall elements by hitting a cymbal if you feel like it. Now of course, most of us aren't playing live with video walls behind us. Most of us are going to be practicing at home or filming drum covers at the most. So in that case, you'd probably want to go buy a drum plugin, like Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, or an emulation of older drum modules. The advantage this gives you is that you get higher quality samples, because there's nearly infinite amount of space on your computer's hard drive, as opposed to the smaller memory bank built into most drum modules. Also, drum modules tend to sound very dated very quickly, even if they do use high resolution samples, because the people that mix the sounds, they kind of sort of lock them in place as to what decade the module was made. Drum software doesn't have that problem, because the moment you get bored, you just switch to a different one. The main problem in the past is that compatibility between software and electronic drums used to be very iffy, with high latency. But now programs, especially the ones from TuneTrack, like Easy Drummer and Superior Drummer, they have dozens of mapping presets for any electronic drums that you have. They have support for positional sensing, and even like a hi-hat open and closed engine that you can dial in yourself. Okay, so the next reason why electronic drums are getting better, but it doesn't always feel like it, is just that a lot of the upgrades we get now are invisible. And this is because the form factor of electronic drums has kind of been locked in. Some electronic drums on the more expensive end of things are acoustic sized, and then the other ones are just gonna be pad based. It, we're not really experimenting with other weird shapes anymore. So we're not using electronic drums that are the shape of human heads. That was already tried in the 80s and no one ever tried it since. So because the form factor is locked in, you got your pad based drums and you got your acoustic sized drums. Now all that's left to do is make the internals of the drums, cymbals and modules better. Whatever better means to that company. Some companies are working on giving you thinner, more flexible cymbals that are a little bit more forgiving on your wrists. They're gonna make more cymbals that have 360 triggering, so if they spin, it doesn't matter. Companies are working at giving you better sounds built into the drum modules. They'll get round robin sample import as a feature, or maybe better open and close technology on like the F note cymbals. Two modules can look nearly identical, but one will give you 12 tracks of USB audio, and the other one doesn't even give you audio over USB. Two modules can look nearly identical, but one does Bluetooth audio and Bluetooth MIDI, and the other one doesn't. Also, it's really easy to disagree on core functions of electronic drums and what the company should even be working on at this very moment. For example, should electronic drums become more and more acoustic sized, or should they strive for the pad based sizes that we saw since like 1985? Which form factor is quote unquote better? You'll get different answers depending on who you talk to. Why are people making all these giant electronic drums? I want something premium, but small. I don't want to lug around a 22-inch bass drum. That's why I switched to electronic drums in the first place. 
Technology is supposed to miniaturize things. Then other people are like, why are these companies making these 8-inch electronic drums? That's like 90s era crap. I don't want that. I want something larger. That way I can be comfortable switching back and forth between acoustic and electronic. I like the stage presence of larger drums. And I also like the, the heaviness of playing on a giant kick drum versus a wobbly little pad. There's also a different group of people out here that wish that drum companies would focus on the drum pads, just make the cymbals and drums feel nice to play on, and then I'll use the sounds for my drum software, because we all know that drum modules sound like trash, even the brand new ones. Meanwhile, there are other customers that wish that drum companies would stop thinking so hard about the drum pads, because they're fine with that, they just want a drum set that has better sounds inside. The reason why I'm bringing all this up is that different people have different priorities on what they wish the drum companies would work on. So a drum company will make progress in one area, but if you don't care about that area of development, you'll think that the drum set hasn't improved. Another problem is the fact that drum companies overhype their products and set up false expectations. They say things like the drum set will redefine the whole industry, or that uh, it's going to revolutionize electronic drumming. Obviously, it's the job of the company to stand behind their products that they spent so much money and so much time working on. But also, they can go too far sometimes and pretend it's better than it really is. So while the drum sets still make progress, they might not make the kind of progress that they're claiming in their marketing. And if you play electronic drums for long enough, or you're just aware of the advertising for long enough, you'll eventually see the marketing trends and the cycles and the same sort of claims over and over again from multiple companies, and the whole thing just ends up looking corny. Also, I feel like there's a little sprinkling of electronic drum romanticism as far as like what kinds of upgrades we used to see in the past. Yeah, there have been a bunch of times in electronic drum progression where five years of just upgrade after upgrade hit, and it was amazing. It was just an incredible time to be an electronic drummer, and you were scared to buy a new drum set because you were afraid that any day a new drum set that was twice as good would just arrive for the exact same price. The problem is it's very easy to think about those little spurts of innovation and then forget about all the years where nothing was really happening, where a drum set was just 10, 20% better than the previous one. Electronic drums are entering, not quite yet, but they're entering what I'll call the iPhone paradox. Every new iPhone is empirically, measurably better than the previous one. But it doesn't really feel like anything has changed when you hold them both side by side. You can skip one Samsung phone or one iPhone without too much of a, a pain point happening. But if you skip two phones or three phones, that's when you start seeing all the things that you're missing out on. I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that the exact same thing is happening in the keyboard realm, but worse. Because keyboards have gotten so much right and so much R&D has been poured into them that a decent keyboard is really freaking good at this point. And yes, the new rolling keyboard may be better than the previous year's rolling keyboard, but is it going to be twice as good? Are they doubling their potential every single year or every two years? Probably not. I think that it's also like electronic drums where you have to wait a little bit before massive things coalesce and so you get enough features to want to upgrade to the next thing. Okay, so to sum up my thoughts on this, I am very happy with what electronic drums have achieved so far on the high end of the market. I feel like the core problem is that these companies make trash beginner drum sets and that's where they need to focus their attention next. Because sometimes these companies will get really comfortable assuming that everybody's going to save up four to $8,000 to buy a flagship. When in reality, they need to take some of that great stuff they've done and miniaturize it cut costs somehow in order to get some of those features down to the $1,000 price range and the $500 price range, because the majority of people are out here buying Alesis Nitros. But like I said, I am hopeful for the future of electronic drums because the core functionality of electronic drums has been figured out on the high end. They just needed to sand off the edges and make the beginner stuff as good as I know they're capable of making them. That's the video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Really appreciate it. Go join Patreon if you want to see the videos before anybody else, like these lovely people over here or over here. See you in the next one.